You are welcome to Canna Spader Christmas. I heard I was supposed to say you in the beginning. Uh, this is part two of my Falcon Player mini series. If you missed part one, dispensing with the pleasantries this time, let's dive right in. I like to just start on this panel right here and then work my way across when I'm configuring a brand new uh, version of Falcon Player. So we'll start here. Um, if you'll notice, the clock defaults to UTC. Now, if you're in that time zone, great. You don't have to change this. But if you're not in that time zone, uh, it's a good idea to set it for yours. So go to status control, config set time. And you can scroll down here. All the US stuff is at the bottom. I'm in the central time zone. And you just hit submit. And if we go back to the status page, it now says September 29th at 8.11 p.m. So that matches what's on my computer. Excellent. The next thing we'll tackle is the network settings. Now this is a very important part of the setup and it's also one of the most confusing. So I've got a little uh, presentation here for you. So this is your Raspberry Pi and it has two ways of getting to it over the network. It has a Wi-Fi interface. It's called WLAN Zero. And it has an Ethernet interface, a wired Ethernet called ETH Zero. Now the WLAN Zero and ETH Zero are, they, they come from Linux. So if you're familiar with Linux, you're, you'll be familiar with those names. If you're not, that may be kind of foreign to you. But those are the two interfaces, the two network interfaces that are built onto the Raspberry Pi. So the way to set those up is, uh, or at least the way I set them up, is the Wi-Fi interface connects to my home network. And so what that allows me to do is get on my phone, for example, I can log into the Pi over the Wi-Fi. There's no, you know, show data going over the Wi-Fi. Um, and I can start and stop playlists and things like that. And, uh, and it won't affect the show network. The wired interface feeds my controllers. It feeds the show. So that is set to a different network. So all that data can stay just within the controllers that are running my show. So for example, uh, the Wi-Fi interface may be, you know, a private network on 192.168.168. The show network is really almost anything you want to pick. Now I would go do some research and find out what a private network is and pick a, an IP range on a private network. Uh, so in this example, I've chosen 192.168.2. And again, that can be any number as long as it's different from your home network. To configure the network, go over to status control and network. And then it brings you to this page. And so you will notice right now it is set ETH0, the wired interface, and that's the one that I have plugged into my router right now. Um, that one is set for DHCP. So it, my home router, it gave it an address of 65. The WLAN doesn't have anything. It's set for DHCP right now, but it, it's not connected to anything because I have not entered the uh, the wireless password and, and or the uh, SSID and the password in here yet. So the only one that's working right now is ETH0 or the wired interface. So we want to change this. And the first thing you want to do is make sure the this WLAN or the wireless interface is working. You can leave it set for DHCP and just enter in your wireless uh, settings to let it log into your router. It'll get an automatic IP address or you can set what's called a static address, meaning that's something you pick yourself and that doesn't change. Now the trick there is you have to pick an address that works on your network. If, if all this is really confusing to you, then just 
stick with DHCP and find out what the IP address is when the Pi boots up. The only downside of that is the IP address can change. So if you if you have this in your in your office somewhere and you've set it all up and then you take it out to your garage, it may get a different IP address. That's just the nature of how this works. So to set that up, the first thing you do is enter your SSID, uh, the network name, and then the password of your network. You hit update interface. Uh, look for this little banner to show up here. And then, uh, then hit restart network. It will bring up this message saying that this could, you know, lose your connection. Hit yes. And then when you go back to the status page, if it all works, you will see two IP addresses. Now this was the original one. This is the wired Ethernet ET80 and this is the wireless interface. If we open a browser to this IP address, we should be able to get in. When planning your display, it's probably a good idea to either get out a sheet of paper or get a spreadsheet, set up a spreadsheet, so that you can keep track of the IP addresses on your show network. Because chances are they're all going to be static. You're going to want them to be static so that they don't change. And so you will need some way to keep track of them. Now, if you have a large show, I'll assume you already do some of this, but if, if you're just starting out uh, and you only have maybe the Pi and the controller, you, you know, you may be able to remember that. But as your show grows, you get more devices on that network, you may just want to keep track of it. For example, if you have a bunch of uh, ESP modules or something like that. Uh, you know, the more you get, the, the harder it's going to be to remember all this stuff. So it's good to keep, you know, track of this stuff somewhere. Now, in this example, I chose that the show network is going to be on the 192.168.2 private network. And this .x means that that's, that's the host address. So the Raspberry Pi will have an address, the controllers will have one, other Pis, if you have ESP modules. They, so the last number is going to be the host address. That last number can be anywhere between 2 and 254. 1 and 255 are special addresses, and I won't really get into that. Uh, so let's say that I chose 192.168.2.200 for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and I want to set the first controller up, so I'll give that a .2 address. I have another controller, let's say that's .3. Uh, if I have a, a couple of slave pies, I'll just choose .100 and .101. There's, there, you know, these are all just random numbers between 2 and 254 that I'm choosing. Um, it, I tend to kind of group things together by function. It just kind of helps you don't have to you could just start with two three four five six and and just start from there if you wanted to so um just really what it, however you want to set this up that's going to be your deal it really doesn't matter um if you know if you organize them this way or if you just start and and start at two and and go on higher the only requirement is they can't be repeated so you can't have two 192.168.2.2 is on, on the same network. You know, you, they, these last numbers have to be different. Now, once we're here, we can set the ETH0 interface to our show network. So we go back to network, ETH0. I would choose a static address because we don't have anything that's going to assi assign anything automatically. I said I would do 192.168.2 and let's say this one is 200. That ought to work. Hit update interface, restart network, yes. And so let's go back to status page. And so this updated. So this first one is the wired ethernet. That's going to be my show network. And this one is the Wi-Fi interface, and that one is connected to my home. All right, that about concludes the first menu section there on the left. Um, 
really just setting up the network. There is other stuff in that menu. There's display testing, there's setting up events, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't use any of that, so I'm not gonna go into that. I did have a question come up about how do you find the IP address if you're using DHCP? I always use my router because that is always going to have a list of all the allocated IP addresses. Um, there is an HDMI output on the Pi, um, but I did notice some discrepancies. It used to show you what IP addresses it got. It's not doing that now. So I don't know if that's a Falcon Player thing. I don't know if that's a new Pi thing. Um, I did check on the B3 and the B3 Plus. The B3 Plus didn't show anything. The B3 only showed the Ethernet port. So that's useless uh, to look for the IP address. It also reads out uh, through the audio jack on the Pi if uh, the IP addresses it got. Now the B3 Plus read both of them out. The B3 only read the Ethernet. So I'm not sure what's going on. I did file a bug, but uh, it's probably pretty low priority. I would just use the router. Log into your router and it will tell you what IP addresses have been assigned. The BeagleBone doesn't even have an audio output, so you can't use that, and the HDMI output is disabled. So neither of those two options is going to work. You're going to have to use a router, or if you have some kind of port scanning stuff, whatever. Uh, router is the easiest because everybody will be able to log, should be able to log into your router. The next video will cover the the, the second tier of stuff. So that'll be like uh, loading up your sequences, creating playlists modifying playlists, um, creating a schedule. And I don't know if there's anything else on that menu. And if I can get to the third menu, which is actually setting up the out inputs and outputs, I will do that. If there's not enough time, I'll post that to the next, you know, a, a future video. When the next video is up, I will post it here. Uh, until then, I'll just look silly doing this. I hope you found some of this information useful. If you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs are...